Hello. Um, quick demonstration, not so quick, of where the n minus 1 comes from in standard deviation. I'm going to assume you understand the variance uh, takes this form from, um, and which is in our formula books, and that the sum of squares will be useful for us to know is in this form here, you'll see in your formula books. So, Where's this all coming arising from? It's arising from the fact that we're sampling. So our sum of squares here is our individual x size divided by x bar here in the bracket, all squared, yeah? But of course, if we're sampling, the x bar is also coming from the same data, the sum of the x's divided by n. So if we substitute that back into our equation here, um, that's our x bar here, and then we uh, bring the n outside of the bracket, we've got n squared on the bottom by n cancelling out, we end up with this form of the equation. Our first term is the sum of the x i squared, and here in the bracket we've got our second group of the sum of all the values. I'm going to call those j, i the first, second, third, fourth, up to the nth, and I'm using J here to distinguish it from the I over here. Now, of course, that's one multiplied by that's um, the sum multiplied by the sum again. And I want to distinguish here um, that, of course, we've got x1 plus x2, x3. That's our first version of the sum in blue. And then in the green here, we've got the same x1, x2, x3 all su um, summed up. And that's going to be in the green, so that's the second sum. And what we can do is look at this second term here, this bit here that I've just written. There we go, in that form. Um, and if we expand these brackets out, we get two distinctly separate parts. Well, the first part is when we multiply the x1 in the first bracket by the x1 in the second, and the x2 in the first by the x2 in the second, and finally the xn in the first by the xn in the second. So what we've got here is we've got all the squares, haven't we? x1 squared, x2 squared, x3 squared, all the way to xn squared, which, of course, in our terminology from above, is just the sum of our x squareds, isn't it? OK, and then we've got the second part where we have our x1 multiplied by our x2, and then our x1 by our x3, and our x1 by our x4. So that will be just using this first x1 here. And then we do the same thing with our x2. And we multiply all of the others there. And finally, we do that all the way down till we get to our xn, the blue xn. And we multiply that through by our x1 all the way to xn minus 1 because our xn's not there. That's up here, isn't it? So what we've got here is quite a big array of values. Now, what's going to happen to each of these values in here? Well, as we look at our expectation, what's our expected value of each of these pairs? Well, on average, we would expect the x1, x, the xn, or in this case, I'm going to use this pair here, the, the xn, on average is going to be our population mean. And the x1, on average, is going to be our population mean. So we're multiplying them together. So each of these terms is going to be our population mean squared. Okay. But it's actually sat in this matrix here, isn't it, which has got um, um, n minus 1 columns and n rows. So each, so therefore there are n minus 1 in brackets times n number of these population means, yeah? So actually this is going to be pretty stable, isn't it? This is effectively just a function of the population mean and a multiplier, yeah? But it does mean that that term that we were looking at is now in our two parts. That's our second part of that term. And here is our expected value of our xi squareds. If we're looking at expectation now, what we're expecting to see. There, we've got that one there, yeah. And when we want to look at our the expected value of our sum of squares, well, if we go back up further, let's just check that out, that we understand not going back all the way to here now. That's our sxx isn't it here's our sum of squares and then we had the term we've just calculated 
But it was divided by n at the front, wasn't it? And taken away from our sum of squares. So if we drop that in here, there's our sum of squares. But now we've got these two terms appearing, haven't we? There's our sum, another sum of squares, but this one's got divided by n at the front of it, hasn't it? And here's our final term of all those population means, and that's now being divided by n. So what are we left with in our next step? So here, here's our is one load of it, isn't it? And this is minus one, that's minus one over n loads of it. So we could write that, couldn't we, as um, if we put it all over the denominator n, that lot would be this here, therefore these two terms together are, we've got n, n minus one of the, of the expected value here, haven't we? Yeah. So what I've then done is just rewritten that by putting that n underneath. Yeah. So it's the denominator of this expected value. And here's our n minus one out of the front. And then we've got our final term unchanged. So in effect, what we've done is we've found the sample variance here. If we wanted to, yeah, haven't we? There we are. That's our expected value of of um, SXX. So if we wanted to look at that, we would have our expected value of SXX and we'd be dividing it by N, wouldn't we? In the usual way. But this SXX is the bracket is what we've got here above, isn't it? All of this. As you can see, there's a common factor here, which is N minus one. So we can bring that out of the front. And then we've got our divide by n, this bit here, and that's going to go down to there. And so we've got this bracket formed. So there's our expected value of the sum of the squares, um, uh, the individual x squared divided by our n, yeah. And then we're going to take away our population mean squared. Now, our population variance is, of course, this bracket, yeah. That's if we just had, <clears throat> if we'd had our whole population, we'd have calculated it like that. So what I've done here is say, here's our population variance. So I'm going to mark that with a P. But of course, what we've calculated up here is our sample variance. Yeah. This calculation up here. So therefore, the calculation we had at the top is our sample variance. There is n it's got a factor out the front now isn't it the factor we saw up back up here here it is here's our factor so it's going to be that factor times the population variance and of course what we're interested in is the best estimate of the population variance not the sample variance we're always interested in the population aren't we and we're looking for our best estimate. So if we reverse this equation and make um, the population variance now the subject of the equation, we're going to do the reciprocal of the factor from above, aren't we? And there's our sample variance there. Therefore, our sample, so our population variance, our best estimate of our population variance is going to be the sum of squares divided by n minus 1 rather than divided by n and therefore our population standard deviation sigma p is going to equal our sum of the squares divided by n minus 1 all square rooted we have a long journey but that's why we get to n minus 1